Hi everyone, Jerry Bellini here from Recycle Parts Bar. Welcome to Learn with the Little House. All right, so today is our first page in our Altered Book series, and I'm really excited about it. It was fun, fun, fun to do. Um, however, my video got a little longer than I would uh, normally like, but uh, to be honest with you, I think the Altered Book series, uh, the videos are gonna be a little longer, so I apologize in advance for that. But I did want to show you the page before we get started, and I'm calling it I Am My Thoughts, and there'll be a close-up at the end of the video so you can see it in more detail. And I do have to tell you that it did morph, okay? Um, so as I went along, when I got to the end, I started adding other things. You'll see it the picture at the end. It was really fun. Uh, I want to go over the supply sheet with you uh, really quickly. And I did list all the supplies in my description box below um, with links, okay? Um, you can find the products on Amazon and I am an Amazon affiliate. I just wanted to let you know that. And I wanna start using my Amazon links um, and I do get credit for that and when you make a purchase. And I really appreciate your support in that manner. So uh, let's go down the list of supplies. We're gonna need book text. Well, we're not gonna use the book text uh, for this particular uh, project, but what we're gonna use is the um, rip-off pieces from the book text. So since we are gonna be using book text in the future, in future pages, and you have all those pages left from your, when you ripped out uh, the pages for your book, um, I'm gonna show you how to rip the edges off and then I'm gonna we're going to actually use them in this project. Um, we need white glue, and you can use Mod Podge, Decoupage, whatever kind of white glue that dries clear. Um, some black cardstock. If you don't want to do your silhouette in a black uh, cardstock, you can also draw your silhouette. You can cut a picture out of a magazine. Uh, we're going to use a permanent pen, black pen, and I like the Sharpie um, non bleed fine point. Um, I also, uh, in this video, I'm going to use a general pencil. It's a 9XXB and um, I'll talk about it in the video and it's in the description box below. We're going to use water soluble paint. I'm using a watercolor palette. You can use gelatos, ink tense pencils. If you don't have any watercolor paint, you can use um, acrylic paint watered down. Gesso, Liquitex Gesso, I use um, a paintbrush, you need a water container, a credit card, card or scra a scrapey tool. You really need baby wipes. Um, if This is optional. Uh, if you don't want to write on your piece, you can use those little baby uh, letter stamps. You get them at Michaels or AC Moore. And if you're going to use those, you need some archival ink. You can use uh, Rangers or stays on, um, and I, did, I use black. I also used um, uh, Tim Holtz uh, Distress Ink around the outside edges of my page. And um, to color it, you can use a Stabilo. You know, there's a lot of things that you can use instead of the things I used. So I'm just give, gonna give you my supply list, and then um, you know, you see what you can come up with. Use what you have. All right, I'm excited, let's get started. Are you ready? Okay, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about how many pages I removed. And I'm going to attempt to do that now. It, it, always to me gets a little confusing when you talk about pages because some people when they talk about pages they're talking about this page which has two sides okay so this book had 500 pages all together and that's front and back 500 pages I wound up taking out this double spread I wound up taking out 75 of these double spreads. If you count each page, 
One of these is four pages. One, two, three, four. So 75 of them is actually 300 pages. Gosh, I hope that made sense. So my book was 500 pages and I took 300 pages out. So I took more than half of the pages out. So I don't want to make you too crazy with this. I just wanted you to see what your book should look like. You need to thin it out and I'm sorry if I sound like I'm overthinking it but I just really wanted to be clear. So you need to thin it out. I keep a tweezer nearby so that the pages that I ripped out, sometimes you're left with a little debris in there and you and you do want to get it out. So it's really hard to get it out with your fingers so I just keep a tweezer. So the first uh, thing you're going to do is open to your, the center of your book, approximately the center of your book. Actually, we're not really in the center, now we are. And you're going to pick out any of your little bits of magagi that I mentioned earlier with your tweezer. And then you're going to start gluing your pages together. And I'm going to show you what not to do first. So do not take, the string is here. Let's, let's zoom you in a little bit. My husband's working down right underneath me making a lot of noise, so I apologize if he makes a noise. Um, the string is right here. Okay, so you are not going to glue these two pages together. No, because these can be easily ripped out. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to glue this page. Okay, there's the string. You're going to glue this page to this page. That's what you're going to do. And then you're going to glue this page to the page on the other side of it. All right, so we're going to start by gluing three pages together on each side. I'll just do one and then I'll let you do the rest yourself because this is boring. Okay. And since I put a little too much glue, I'm just going to put some glue on, on this page too. All right, and then you're going to fold the page over and you can even close the book. Go from the center out like that. Before we get started on the actual altered book pages, I wanted to share something with you that I do to make my ephemera, my background pieces that I will often glue down on a page. And I love to use old book text, okay? So um, this is like background paper. And what I do, I have um, various book pages, so I'm not going to just use the book pages from the book. I'm going to use all different kinds of book pages, different colors, different styles of books, paper. but I like to prepare my um, background paper ahead of time. I like to do things in batches, so I just wanted to share with you um, what I do. And I like to rip the edges off with a ruler, so I'm just going to do one. You can do more than one, and that's what I do. I just rip them down like that. And I like to sometimes leave a little text on the edge, and you're going to say, why? What is this? I have projects and I have a project that we're, I'm going to share with you that we're going to use these papers so don't throw them out. Um, so some of them tear off with a little bit of text at the end and some of them go to the edge and tear, it, tear them off so that they're nice and clean. And now I'm left with this beautiful book block of pages. So then I'm just going to go in and rip some strips, rip some different sizes of these pages. I like to have the stuff ready. 
So you see some dark pages, some larger, some larger print, some smaller print, some dictionary, some music, and they're all prepared with ratty edges, and I love that, for my altered book. So I don't have to stop and run around the room and look for a book um, or look for many books because, as you can see, all different colors. And then here's my container with all my strips. And see how lovely, lovely they look? Let's just talk about, a, for a second, this very old, very brittle paper that crumbles in your hand. It is often the most beautiful paper because of the color, and I do use it. Once you put your glue on top of it, it's pretty much stuck down. So do not be afraid to use this kind of paper as an embellishment on your page. All right, grab your paper bag and rip it the way I showed you to rip your book text. And I didn't, I didn't cut it apart or anything. And um, you know, the part down the center of the bag that has the seam, I'm gonna use that too, so don't worry about it. Um, I put a little glue in uh, a container. I prefer to work out of a flat surface. And so now we're going to just grab our book and we glued these three pages together on both sides and now we're going to cover this section with this brown paper bag and you see when I opened that up it's a pretty long strip so feel free to make it into a smaller piece and you can use your ruler or you can just rip it like I did and the first thing we're going to start in the center because we're going to cover the center where the string is All right. and again if you prefer to put your deli paper in there go right ahead and do that if you don't then don't bother and when you put your paper bag in. Just take your fingernails. Let me zoom you in a little bit. Oh, that might be a little too much. Okay, right there. Just, you know, stick your fingernails in there to make sure that the paper bag gets in the crease. Okay? And you're just going to cover both sides. And then you're also going to um, put glue on top of the paper bag. Okay, so I'll just do the center section with you. And make sure you use enough glue um, because if you don't use enough glue it's going to lift up. Um, sorry about that banging. My husband is in the garage which is right underneath my art room. I don't know, that might have been a bad idea to put my art room over here. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so by putting enough glue on the page, um, then I don't have to put the glue on the back of this. I mean, you can do that also if you wanna be sure that it's gonna stick down. You can put it on both surfaces, the book and the paper. And just, you know, just keep doing doing this. And your, your pieces don't have to be square. They can be random uh, shapes. They can be circles. They can be whatever. Just get the page covered. So I just wanted to show you my page is all glued down and it is wet and I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to step away and go have some chicken soup that I made today. And when I come back, hopefully it will be dry enough to do the next part. All right, so I was just putting some gesso on um, the page and very a light, a light touch. And I am gonna wipe it back with um, one of my baby wipes. 
And after I do this, I want to put a couple layers on and I'm not really sure what I want to do. So I'm going to experiment and um, I encourage you to do the same. Keep your baby wipe handy because um, if you do do something that you don't like, well A, you can cover it up, but um, you might be able to wipe some of it back a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is put some color on here, I decided. And um, I'm going to use a water soluble medium. I have a watercolor palette um, that I love to just grab and use. It's got my favorite colors in there. And use, you know, use whatever you have and pick a color that you like. I think I'm going to put a little yellow on here. I love my uh, watercolor palette. I'm, I'm using it so you can see it. I These are my Daniel Smith paints and I just, I love them. And um, like I said, I just chose colors that I really, really love. And I couldn't tell you what they are <laughs> because I put them in here and then that's it. Um, they're also, it's not just Daniel Smith in here, it's my mom's watercolor paints are in here. So there's some Winsor Newtons and whatnot. And if you go back in my um, channel uh, lineup and you do a search on watercolor paints, oh, my mom's gone. She'll be gone four years in February. Anyway, um, when I found all her watercolors, they were, they were hard as a rock. And I couldn't, I couldn't throw them out. So I, I reconstituted them, and um, I did a video on how to do that. If you're interested, um, check that out. You know what? I'll make it easy for you. I'll put the link. I'll put the link in the bottom in the description off. So I just want to give my page a little more interest. It's kind of boring. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to kind of go back and forth and work on this for a couple minutes and then I'll come back when I'm satisfied. So I used yellow. I used a little red in here and you can see I used a little green um, to just kind of make the page more interesting. And then I took these pencils and I just kind of went over where the seams are. Um, and now I'm going to use my water brush and wet these and just blend, blend them in a little bit. And I want you to cut out um, a silhouette shape. Just take your scissor, don't overthink it, and cut out a silhouette shape. If you are really nervous about doing something like that, go in a magazine or a children's book and cut out, um, you know, a head and shoulders. Or you could even sketch something. I like, um, I do a lot of scribble art, and so I sketched out this little person. You could trim it out. You could leave it just like that, okay? So your person is going to be over here in, your, in the right hand corner and um, I want you to take a piece of uh, book text and remember when we were ripping up our book um, there was lots of papers that didn't have any text on it so I want you to take find a piece that you like the color you can write on this or you can use um, these wonderful little alphabets that um, you can get at Michael's or what have you for like a dollar. So I, I love these little alphabets. And I chose to stamp mine out. I just like the way that looks. Almost looks like a typewriter. I am my thoughts. So that's going to get glued down over here. Your silhouette is going to um, get glued down over here. So you can go ahead and glue those pieces down now. And then we are going to take our papers and just before you get started with anything I want you to just think this process through we're going to start I have an aversion to this flat edge <laughs> on mine so that's why I put that over there um, but you know use the flat edge don't use the flat edge whatever you want to do 
but just to get a kind of an idea of how many you think might fit on your page because all our books are different sizes all right they don't all have to be long in fact that would be boring so get some short ones and you know you can go in and stick some short ones in there okay so I want you to play with this for a couple minutes so now what I want you to do once you've kind of got a, a vague notion of how many of these pieces you're going to use and you can always put more in I want you to start writing your thoughts on here I am my thoughts I am creative I have so many ideas I am overwhelmed or you could just write the word overwhelmed okay so just think about it for a little bit and you know write down some words use a waterproof pen or if you want to if your if your uh, papers are wide enough and you want to and you can you can certainly use your little stamps too you could do both you could use jelly pens you could use any other kind of marker just to have it be permanent alright I wrote out a bunch of things and I'm gonna start gluing my strips down and just because I think this will be easier um, I'm putting glue on my page first and I thought you know you might want to see me do this part and just be sure when you get to the crease of your book that you um, push it down you know with either the paintbrush or with your fingernail and I did use white glue to glue down um, my silhouette but this is why you want to use um, a permanent a permanent marker you don't want it to bleed once you start putting it down so this is a little space here that I can put another another one all right I got a little carried away with my thoughts the next thing I'm going to do is I cut out a piece of book text and put it on the head I'm just going to put a little uh, paint on there and then I'm going to draw a flower because I love flowers and I have to have a flower in my piece. And I am going to go along with uh, along the edges and we can do that right now. Um, my stuff is still a little wet but I wanted to go along the edges with this um, dis green distress uh, ink. I absolutely love this pencil it's it um, it doesn't move with water so once you put it down it's it is what it is and I just it's I just love using it it's a great mark making pencil um, I love this pencil and it and it writes really well on top of a gluey surface and it just is is a wonderful um, graphite pencil oops missed a spot so I just took the pencil and went around each oh I actually missed two went around each one of these papers and uh, yeah and then I sorry I didn't turn the camera back on for this but I took a piece of book text which you saw in the last clip I hope and um, I just covered it, I put a little gesso on it, and then I just took my watercolor paint and just kind of blopped down some color. You know, if I showed you every single thing I did, <laughs> this video would be three hours long. So basically, I just put a little color on it, and then I went back and took my graphite, uh, this, this pencil, and just kind of went around the outside edge and just put in a few pretend leaves, and you see, I just put some yellow and stuff there. I did a scribble on top of my silhouette but you can't really see that and don't forget to date your page. 
Okay, I dated my page and uh, I am my thoughts and I could probably fill up four more pages with my thoughts and I hope you enjoyed this video and um, we're going to do another page uh, quite possibly next week and uh, these pages take a long time so take your time doing them and um, I hope you've had fun. I hope you will have fun with it. And I hope you have a blessed day full of love and recycled art. And I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment. Please uh, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And please share my videos with others. I really appreciate that. See you later.